I think you can't go wrong with these coffees. I'm just amazed. Well, this strikes me as a, again, a very coherent coffee. Perhaps because we've been tasting mocha java, it strikes me as a mocha java in the nose. There's a sweet sweetness, a kind of pungency at the same time, savory character, but there's an aromatic note that I'm puzzling over right now. I'm reminded of number one for some reason. Well, this is a less disciplined coffee and a little rowdier. Yeah, that's yep. for sure. Yes, <laughs> but that may be it. Less predictable. Less classic, more wayward. What was the last one? Wayward, going its own way, you know, like a, yes, like yes, a yes, child indeed. in a family who's, <laughs> oh, who's I wayward, who yeah. go, <laughs> does his or her own thing. But it's, uh, it's it definitely sweet, but it has a kind of... What I'm trying to do is to avoid terms that have negative connotations, but I'm getting a kind of, mm -hmm. you know, cedar, have you ever barbecued a fish on cedar planks? Yeah, yeah. Well, this yeah, this, this strikes me as, as the cedar plank we have mm -hmm. in our kitchen to, to roast, yeah. roast salmon on. In other words, it, do, it doesn't I have like a that. fishy, but I meant it has that sort of... No, uh, right, it's got the mm -hmm. kind of... I don't want to say a meaty depth, but I call it a kind of meaty depth, but it's a kind of an aromatic wood at the same time. I know yeah. that's a very, very long and complex descriptor, but... I think it was pretty apropos getting it to. You know, I'm getting some, some high notes, some sort of floral high notes. You get those? Yeah. At the top of the profile. Yeah. And maybe a little bit of, yeah, That's a very a delicate flower. flower. Like, it's like jasmine, but jasmine is more intense than this. Maybe your lilac out there in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Well, we, yeah, that's, uh, it's def definitely lilac, there. And then there's this odd complex cedar note at the bottom, near the bottom of the profile. And in the middle, I suppose, there's a fruit. Oh. My wife and I, when we were in Sacramento, we went to a farmer's market, and we, we bought some mulberries, which you can never find in the San Francisco area. And this uh, remind, the fruit reminds me of mulberry, but of course that's typical, right? You just smell or taste something, and, and then, then right. all the coffee is <laughs> yeah. I think it's a berry, a kind of in the middle. Very interesting, distinctive. All right, let's uh, taste. Mm -hmm. It is wayward. Wow. Yeah, it's wayward in the cup, too. Closer in the cup to n than number one was when I first tasted it. Again, a kind of a clean finish. Mm-hmm. Clean. It's a very interesting coffee. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wow. Because I just tasted those yeah, damn mulberries, I'm getting... <laughs> I'm getting, getting mulberry. mulberry cup, yeah. Yeah. Super yeah. mulberry. I know. <laughs> yeah. That's the way we're all prisoners of that, yeah. Yeah, and the finish, I could see the... The fruit notes as a blackberry, or since I don't think it's fair to fasten so clearly on mulberry, since it's not a commonly tasted <laughs> taste that I can vouch it's not common, at least in the San Francisco. But it has a, I think it's a kind of aromatic wood and and berryish fruit combination. It has a really interesting transition to finish, to aftertaste from the cup. You yeah. notice it it, it gets more complex or interesting almost, and very mm -hmm. rich with the kind of sweet pungency that carries way deep into the long finish. 
Yeah, this is a real interesting cup. I can imagine people, some people may not like this cup. Always possible. I think the <laughs> old soul, was it? The old soul, it was a kind of classic. No, it was the uh, Orans that had the Costa Rica in it, number two, that probably would yeah. be quite satisfactory to a conventional American lover of high-grown Central American Colombian coffees. But in this yes. case, uh, this one really goes off somewhere into the, in an interesting way, goes off into the woods. Yeah, I, I love it. I love the journey, but uh, I agree. It. I certainly could predict that I would have people that would uh, not yeah. be so enamored. Do you get the cedar? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. This has it in, yeah, plentiful. Again, you know, we uh, just to remind anybody who's watching us for the first time that the cedar in coffee is a desirable characteristic. It's a aromatic wood that most people find very pleasant. We're just not used to maybe drinking it. I guess we drink oak, talk about oak and wine, but uh, cedar is very uh, common in coffee. Yeah, it's coffee's almost coffee. Yeah, could be called so, coffee's uh, uh, version of. It all. has a <laughs> prominent cedar and it has fruit, a kind of <laughs> dark berry, not blueberry. Uh, no, not yeah, definitely so, not uh, blueberry. And I'm still getting the floral notes less prominently than in the nose. But if you draw back and, yeah, the floral and dies observe down carefully, you'll, at the top of the profile, you'll get these hints of, uh, of sweet flowers. Very nice. Yeah. It's interesting, I don't recall in any of these coffees, Kevin, chocolate, which is unusual. In most coffees, <laughs> you get, often get chocolate notes. I'm sorry to disappoint, disappoint people who... Chocolate is always a big winner for most people because it because in yeah, coffee it does it's have a like very, a to be expected. Chocolate is a very sophisticated kind of ch variable kind of chocolate. It's not a kind of it's not like tasting Hershey's. Yeah. I'm ready to for the reveal there. I I'm okay. talked out. Good. Taste it out for now. All right. Okay. Let's see if I can. Dennis, are oh, you able Martinez. to zoom in? So that is that really it? And can you make it out, Ken? Martinez, it's, uh, that's There right. we go. Martinez, J. Yeah, Martinez. Okay. It's there, of course, there. Mocha Java. Private Reserve, number 227. I really think this is it. I mean, this is the J. Martinez uh, coffee. And if you're not familiar with John Martinez, uh, John Martinez is his son now, is this, uh, John Jr. And, uh, but J. Martinez is an Atlanta roaster. Man, one of the... I think one of the first people I met in the coffee business. They're known for their uh, Jamaican Blue Mountain, and they're also known. I think John had a background. The, the father had a background in the in the cigar business right. because he's of the packaging. Their the packaging is well. Really it was Martinez cigars. Beautiful. I smoked them when I was a cigar smoker. It is a Yemen Matari and an aged Sumatra Mandaling. Ah, no wonder it's so so unique yeah the aged sumatras it's a that's another curious story we just keep getting into curious stories in this episode aged sumatras were based on a coffee type that became popular in the 18th 19th centuries where aged coffees were carried in the in the holds of sailing ships and they got this sort of moist um, musky richness perhaps uh, from that that long kind of enclosure and moist enclosure uh, so it they became a kind of they were mostly javas it became a sort of a coffee type 
And I'm not sure who or exactly when the some exporters decided to, to try to reproduce this style of coffee by taking Sumatras, wet hulled Sumatras, and putting them in warehouses in Singapore. And these are special aging warehouses. The, the bags sit in warehouses for about five years or so. And they're, they're expensive coffees because people have to rotate the bags all the time because if they stay in one place, they'll get a kind of a damp, a musty from the moisture. It's, the, the, the air is moist in the warehouses. I think it's just Singapore port air. They're in the Sing port area of Singapore. Yeah. And so that, those are aged Sumatras. Wet hull, they're held for at least five years in these warehouses. It's an unusual coffee. And they have that kind of cedary, woody taste. And as far as the mocha, I assume that's where the floral note comes from, but the characteristics don't leap out at me as, uh, as mocha. Ma Matari, by the way, is a standard term for mochas from uh, the area in the Yemen mountains between the port where the coffees are shipped from, not mocha, but a, another port in the Red Sea, and the the capital Sanaa. So in, it's a you very tall, rugged mountains and Matare is sort of a market name for coffees from that area. There is yeah. an area called Bani Matar. I visited the village of Bani Matar, actually, a beautiful place. But usually that's just a standard term for a certain style of mocha. But I can't really say much about the mocha. It's kind of low-toned. There's a low-toned brightness that I suppose you could associate with a natural coffee from that area. Yeah, I kind of thought because I probably had both of the, I, I knew the coffees, and uh, the first one and this one, I thought maybe my reasoning of the finding them similar at having that w big wayward taste at the be or s uh, smell before the taste uh, was that uh, the aroma is because of the mocha in common. Could be. Who knows? Could be. These are both kind of rare and very expensive coffees. So I suspect that yep. this blend, <laughs> as with most Martinez coffees, is quite pricey, rare and pricey. Yes. Um, I imagine the others are pretty reasonable in price. Number four, the Martinez blend of rare and unusual coffee. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more shows like this.